Hello and welcome to another awesome video here at Pragmatic Works. My name is Mitchell Pearson and in this video we're going to talk about blanks. Why do I have blanks in my data? How do I identify it? And how do we fix it? So stay tuned. A very common scenario that I see inside of Power BI reports is this problem with blank values. In fact, let me kind of zoom in and show you this real quick. So I'm looking at the average spending per hospital by state. And when I pull it up by state, I'm getting a bunch of blank values. Now, there's a couple of reasons why this can occur. One is because my dimension table my table that describes my data, the table that I use to filter and describe my data, right? The dimension table doesn't have the attribute. It's missing a hospital. It's missing a facility. If you're unfamiliar with dimension tables and fact tables and data modeling, that is such an important topic. It is probably the most important topic for any Power BI developer. Get yourself familiar with that. Go take a look at my three hour video on data modeling for Power BI. It's free on our YouTube channel. The dimension table is the table that we build and we design specifically for describing our data. And if that data is missing attributes, then this can occur. But you say, well, Mitchell, I've looked at the relationship and that facility exists. Why am I still getting blanks? That's a great question. I'm going to get to that in just a moment. Let me show you um, something here. So I was actually helping somebody out. And the cool thing about this is when you know why this occurs and you truly understand it, when you see it in the future, you're going to be able to fix it in seconds. Like literally, you're going to know exactly what it is and you're going to know how to fix it. So I see this a lot and I get to help people out. So I was helping somebody out with this and they had clicked on the blank. They right clicked and they said, show data point as a table. And what this does is it pulls all of these columns from like the claims table, the fact table. So it gives me some information about those blank values, right? Specifically, it's telling me the name of the facility. It's telling me the name of the facility ID and it's telling me the state, which is very confusing because you're like, wait a minute, how come it's showing up as blank in the report if it shows up here? Well, this state is actually in the fact table. So it's pulling back information that doesn't exist in the dimension table. My dimension table does not have this facility ID, which I'll show you here in just a moment. So the reason that we're getting blanks is primarily because this facility ID 270265 for Sagecrest Hospital does not exist in my data model. So if I go over to my hospitals table and you'll actually see I've already filtered this down. So if you look right here, I have a filter on this report. Let me clear the filter and add it back on. If I add a filter on 670265, which I remember that that was the value for Sagecrest Hospital and I click OK here, there's no value. So it doesn't exist in my table. So that is the number one reason why I'm getting blanks. Now, how do you fix this? Great question. The best way to fix this is fix it in the source. Go back to the database where the problem is occurring and have somebody add that record, add that hospital, add that facility to the database. Go back to the third party vendor that is providing you this information and add it there. Go back to Salesforce or SharePoint or wherever the data is coming from. Fix it in the source. That is the gold standard. That's where you want to do it. However, Maybe you can't do it. Maybe that's not an option for you. So you're like, Mitchell, I got to get this done. The report has to be done. Watching this video on a Saturday. How do I do it? I'll show you a quick workaround for this. You can do this a couple different ways. You could just create a little Excel workbook if you want, and you could add the columns and then you could just append it. You could put them together or I'll show you how to do it right here inside of the Power Query editor. So let's do that right now. I'm going to go back over to my home ribbon and we are going to choose transform data. This will bring us, of course, into the Power Query editor. Now, what I want to do is go and create a new table in here just by doing enter data. Now, I'm not a big fan of entering data because it's not reusable across all your different reports. I'd recommend, you know, put this in a database somewhere, put this in an Excel file, put it somewhere outside of the report so it's a little easier to fix and modify and manage in the future. But this is a video, so I'm just going to show you the quick way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and do enter data. And what I want to put in here is I want to enter the data that matches the current hospital table. So I want facility ID 
Keep in mind that this is case sensitive. This is the Power Query Editor. It's using the Elm Power Query language and it is case sensitive. And we're going to put in our facility ID of 670265 and then we're going to go with our facility name, which must match. All right. Now I am purposefully making a mistake. Not quite a mistake yet, but I'm purposefully forgetting something very important to show you the second reason why blanks occur. So we're missing a facility ID. It's not in this table, so we're going to add it. So I'm creating this new table and I'm going to call this table something like add new hospitals down here at the bottom. Hopefully you can see that. All right. And I'm going to click OK. Now I need to get that new hospital table. I need to join that to my original table, right? The way we do that in SQL, if you ever wrote SQL before, is we do union or union all. But we want to add more rows to our original hospitals table. So I click on hospitals over here. And then right here at the top, I'm going to choose to append queries. This is probably one of the options that doesn't get used as frequently inside of Power Query Editor. Merge queries people use all the time. Merge queries is for doing things like joins or a VLOOKUP where you're adding columns to your existing data model, right? But append queries, append queries is just a little bit different. It takes two data sets and it adds rows to that data set. So I'm going to go ahead and click on append queries and I'm going to say I want to append to this table. I want to add to this table from the add new hospitals table and click OK. That's automatically going to map based on the name of the column. So the, the column names must match. They must be perfect. We're going to click close and apply and we're going to see if this worked, right? We're going to close and apply. That's it. That's the quick and dirty way. However, it's not working yet. So don't hang up. If I come over here, oh man, we're still getting blanks. Mitchell, what is going on? So if I go back over to my table though, and I say, I thought I added this and I look at it again and I 670265 and I felt there it is. It's there. So I did add it. It did work. That was the ID. So why is it still blank right here? While you're thinking about that, if you like this video, make sure to take a moment to like and subscribe this video. And if you want more end to end training at Pragmatic Works, we can do that for you. We have live boot camps that we teach publicly where you can just buy one seat or we can train your entire team with a private boot camp. So the reason that this is happening is because we actually, so we fixed the facility ID problem, which is a very common problem, but now we have a data problem. The data problem is that if we go back over to the data view and we actually filter this down to states with blank values, well, we forgot to put the state in there. So now it's blank because the state, so when it's trying to map that state that we pulled from this table that were put into our visualization, it's blank. So when it finds all of the records in the claims table, in the fact table for Sagecrest Hospital, it doesn't know what state to associate them with because my value inside of this table is incomplete. So the first reason that we get blanks a lot of times is because we're just missing the facility ID. The second reason is because that actually does exist in the dimension. It does exist in the filtering, but maybe we have incomplete data. We have dimensional attributes. So columns that don't have the data updated correctly. So now we're getting incorrect data or blanks or whatever it is. This is super easy to fix. So I'm going to show you how to do that by going to transform data. We'll go to add new hospitals. Here's a trick. This one's free. I'm going to click right here on the settings wheel to open back up that little table. And then we're going to add a new column here. We're going to call this state. We're going to add in Texas and I could add in all the columns and click. Okay. While I'm doing this, this is going to solve the problem while I'm doing this. Keep in mind, this is not a best practice. The part of like adding this, through the Power Query Editor because there's a couple different problems that can persist. One is what happens when the original source, look at that, it's fixed. We fixed it. It's magic. What happens when the original source is updated? What happens when the third party vendor fixes the source? Now you have that 670265 value in there multiple times. Now it's a duplicate. Now you no longer have a one to many between these two tables because the facility ID is duplicated in your hospital's table. So if you're going to use this method, then you want to make sure that you're constantly checking the source to see when it's updated um, or you build something else in your filtering where you remove duplicates. 
Uh, that can be a little bit more challenging, but you can always right click on a column in the Power Query Editor, remove duplicates to kind of solve that problem. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a very common problem. I see it all the time. I get emails about it all the time. We see it in a lot of classes we teach. And it's a problem that really, once you understand just why it occurs, it's super easy to fix. So that's why I wanted to do a video on it. I hope you enjoy it. We'll see you in the next one.